And those rules, I hope, will loosen up a little bit based on the current circumstances, and right now they haven't. So we'll see where that goes. But lending, you know what? Choosing your lender properly and choosing someone who knows what they're doing, okay, and a quality company, you need to do that now. It's not the time just to choose anyone and go with any promises because you know what? You'll have problems. You know what, too, and if you, if you go to John Ingram's Facebook page uh, from Axie Mortgage, he does a great explanation of why the mortgage business is going through what it's going through yeah. right now. And, and uh, you know what? Uh, he's even mentioned to me about doing more webinars, giving you some background on understanding of what's going on in the mortgage business. So um, I, 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 I guarantee you more to come. Jennifer Wentz, on Monday's call with Rick and Dan, they mentioned FISBOs are a great target area. What, what are some tips for contacting and engaging with for sale by owner sellers and how often to hopefully gain their trust to list their home? Okay, well, obviously, okay, that's a great question, Jennifer, thank you. Um, obviously, um, anybody in your pipeline is where I would start. Like the, the exact example Dan was talking about on Monday was a, phys, a physical he had been working with for a year. Okay, and uh, my little joke with physicals that have been working for a year is, you know, their pain is directly correlates with the amount of money they have and how long they have to sell their property. This particular person went through all kinds of trials and errors, and, and eventually they were healed and became. And Dan didn't even have to go over; she sent over the pictures. So, it, it, you know. I would say confidence and skill level is huge, but anybody in your pipeline that's a FISBO or expired is where I would start. The new ones, remember, they're expired that have expired and they need to sell and they need you to call and be a professional. And then you have some people that'll need a little time too. So it, there's never been a better time, okay, for you to exercise your versatility. So you call, you ask what's happening, you, you go down the path as far as you can go, but I wouldn't go any further today. Yeah, well here, here's an authentic way that I can give you that I, I, I really feel you're not stepping on anyone's toes. If I were to reach out to a for sale by owner in an area that I knew, here's what I would say. So here's a script for you. I would call up and I'd say, you know what, I'd introduce myself, tell them who I'm with, okay? And then I would ask them this, I'd say, listen, based on inventories being very low today and that properties are being restricted for some of the properties are being restricted to show. If we had a buyer for your property, would you be willing to, uh, uh, you know, work with a realtor? All right. I know that you're you're uh, marketing on your own. I'm just wondering, due to the lower inventories, if they say yes, great. If they say absolutely not, say okay. Thank you for your time. In normal situations, I would push that a little farther, but right. to Rick's point, I think yeah. he's 100% right on. I wouldn't push that, but I would ask, based on low inventories and other of that inventory, people restricting the showings, I'm just asking, okay, if there is a buyer, would you consider working with a realtor? Now, if they say this, well, do you have a buyer? Say, well, I, I don't know, we haven't seen the home. Okay, we'd love to be able to see the home if you're comfortable with that based on this timing. We can also go when you're not home, okay? If you want to leave a key, whatever. Work it out, whatever they're comfortable with, asking their permission. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy because the, the script you just went through is very similar to the one in the Book of Everything. The only difference I would say is, because in the Book of Everything it says, can I come over and preview your home? That's probably not a great idea today because that'll freak some people out. But most people have a complete set of pictures that they can send you over that you could sit down and go through. So I would make that one change today. Have them, and if they're expired, you already have all their pictures, yeah. right? No, that's a great idea. And last but not least, and this is not perfect, we're giving you ideas in the environment that we're in now, is you might say, you know what, why don't I do this? Why don't I touch base with you in the next three weeks? Reconnect, see where we are based on everything going on today. And we can schedule a showing down the road, or I'm sorry, schedule a preview down the road. Right. So you're not doing it right away, but you've now opened up the conversation for the future. You laid the groundwork, you put it in your CRM that you're going to reach back out to them in three weeks, and you do it at that time. Okay? Different ways. I'm just going to add one thing to that. And if it's vacant, you can obviously go over right away. <laughs> cool. Shireen El Husseini asked, I have buyers asking me if it's still a good time to buy or should I wait? What should my response be? Yeah. Well, I, I, honestly, if I'm a buyer right now and I'm not overly freaked out about getting out and looking at property, you have less competition right now. 
And you have people that expect you to still sell them a house today too, remember that. And you have some people that expect to wait and some people, so I would say, once again, you have to use your versatility. If they still wanna buy a house today, I know what I'm doing, I'm selling them a house. Yeah, and let me add this, listen, I, I've always talked about beliefs are powerful. So what you believe makes the decisions in your life. And here's what I believe, so you know. We are gonna get through this. The industry's gonna get through this. It's going to get very, very busy for the future, okay? So keep that in mind, and in knowing that, that it's going to get busy in the future, then guess what? I can get my buyers in today to purchase it before it goes crazy again. Because I'm telling you this, interest rates are gonna be low for a while from that standpoint. You're gonna get a flood of buyers coming in and your buyer is gonna deal with other issues from the past that they're not having to deal with today. So to answer your question is, it is not only a phenomenal time to buy, but you have opportunities in this segment of time, terrible situation, but it is what it is for that purchaser Today, they don't have to deal with some of the challenges like numerous multiple offers and other challenges of so much competition. And I would say in California, especially because that, you know, Arizona and Nevada, we have low inventory. California has almost no inventory. Yeah, really tight. Okay, with that said, one more question and then we'll call it a day. Hannah Wardy, in this current climate of social distancing and sheltering in place, any recommendations for new agents looking to expand their SLI? Okay. Um, here's again, here's what I would recommend. If you do a great job in reverse prospecting and communicating authentically with the people you know, I think they will organically send you additional people. You know, our, our sphere, okay, will grow naturally if we do on a day-to-day -day basis what we're supposed to do, and that's reach out to people who already know, respect us, and love us. So if, do you notice that if you do that first step consistently, all right, like you were supposed to, it helps you in so many of these different areas. So please, don't skip that, and I believe strongly it will also help you grow your sphere. Yeah, and I have two thoughts about that. And when you're talking to your sphere, like if you're saying, like, I would be sending out the newsletters. They're incredibly good, the Birch Hathaway ones. And I would say, by the way, who else do you know that could use information like that? So you grow your sphere from your sphere once you're in rapport, because they'll give you their friends' emails and all kinds of stuff that you can add to your sphere. And the second thing is, a lot of you have really good farms. If you've been through your farm at least a few times, you can just count them like your sphere. Call them, check in, how's it going? Can I help you with any groceries? Do you need, I mean, and if you do that with, now your sphere grows by the farm. I mean, now you have a sphere and a farm and you're basically treating them the same way. No, and I, I believe naturally the conversation, and I'm hearing it from sales executives, naturally they open up and say, you know what, let me tell you, I'll tell you what one of my friends is going through. And it just naturally happens, so. Yeah. I think that's it for today. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you very much. We'll be doing this again next Tuesday, 1.30 for episode four. Look forward to seeing you guys. Keep See rocking you later. out there. Bye-bye. Thank you.